Hey everyone, it's Jeff the IT Guy. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue with our Amazon AWS tutorials. We're still in EC2 and what we're going to do today is we're going to set up the Cloud9 IDE. You might be asking, what's that? Well, Cloud9 is a browser-based IDE or an integrated development environment. And so what it does is it allows you to use the browser-based IDE that Amazon supplies that's connected to your EC2 instance. And so in here you get all of the things that you would expect from an IDE such as code correct, you know, you can it'll show your errors um, as well as code complete or so that you can hit tab and it'll put things in um, as well as having a terminal in it. And so this is a way that you can use like an IDE, like I said, as well as a terminal, it, terminal in your browser. And if you're on something like a Chromebook or um, <clears throat> a Chromebook, we'll just say a Chromebook or Raspberry Pi or something, this is a way that you can continue to write code or develop to your EC2 instance without having to download anything. And so it gives you all of the pros of an IDE and really none of the cons, um, like I said, because you don't have to download anything. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to prepare our instance. So go ahead and open up PowerShell if you're on Windows. If you're not on Windows, go ahead and open up Terminal. Um, if you're on Linux, open up Terminal as well. The great thing about PowerShell is it does allow for the use of Linux commands. And so in our last video, I showed you how to set up PowerShell so that it worked with the SSH client. And so what we need to do is we need to change our directories to the downloads folder because that's where our key file is. And so now that we're in the downloads directory, we're going to go ahead and we're going to log in. And this is the command to do it on my EC2 instance. Okay. So it's going to be SSH and then space dash I then the space, then you, then the name of your key file. And then after that, it's going to be the, your username, which by default is EC2 dash user at, and then your IP address. And so when you log in, you'll get this. And so now that we are here, there's a couple things that we need to install before we get started. And so the first thing we need to install is we need to make sure that we have Python installed. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm going to just type in Python 3 like that, and it's going to say, okay, I've already got Python 3.7.6 installed. But if you don't, it's easy to do. You type in sudo a space yum install Python 3-y, and you'll run this, and it will install Python. This has to be installed. Okay, so now that we've installed Python, it'll go through its thing we need to install Node.js. And so Node and Python are the back end for this um, IDE, <clears throat> okay? So you can check your version if you want to. Um, should just be the same command, so like Node. And it'll tell us, okay, I'm using version 14.5. Okay, but if you haven't, then what you need to do is use a command to install it. And so I'm gonna paste this command here. Maybe. All right, and so this is the command that you that we're gonna use. Um, I'll put this in the description box below so that you have it and you can go ahead and uh, copy paste it into your PowerShell. So you wanna use that and, and that's gonna download it for you. And then you want to use this command. And what this is gonna do is it's going to um, activate NVM, which is Node Version Management. All right, and then after you do that, you're going to do nvm install node, and this is going to install node. Okay, so once you have installed node, then you're good to go. Type in node dash dash version, and it'll tell you which version of node you have installed. One of the things that you're also going to want to do um, that will prevent you from being able to do this is you want to install GCC. So to install GCC, you're just going to type in <coughs> sudo yum install gcc space dash y, install that, and once you have all of this installed and everything's ready, go to your Amazon Management Console. And so now that we're in our Amazon Management call Console, we can go to Cloud9. So we'll just search for it and we'll go to Cloud9. Okay. And so now you can create an environment or you can select one that you've already used. 
And so I've already created an, this environment. But that's okay because we can still do it differently. So you want to give, so you click on create an environment and give it a name. So we'll say this is like our test environment. You're going to hit next step. And from here, you can either create a new EC2 instance and you get to select the instance type and all of this, or you can create and run in remote SSH. Okay. So this is the one we're going to choose because we've already created our EC2 instance. And so for the user, you're going to type in EC2 dash user. Your host is going to be your IP. It's going to be your public IP. It's going to be the one that has .amazon in it. Okay, so you're going to enter that. So copy and paste that. Then you want to view your SSH key. So once you view your SSH key, you want to copy this to your clipboard. Okay, and then once you copy it to your clipboard, we're going to go back to, the power, to our PowerShell and we're going to type in CD space dot SSH. And so in here, you're going to see a file that's going to say authorized keys. And what you want to do is you actually want to create a backup first. And so to create a backup, you're going to do CP, which stands for copy. You're going to give it the file name, the one that's already in there, which is authorized underscore keys. Okay. And then space, and then you're going to give it the new name. And so you can do um, for this one, it's authorized underscore keys underscore backup and this will create a new file and so now that we're that you've created the file you copied it um go into your authorized keys so you can do sudo nano and then the name of the file which is authorized underscore keys okay and you're going to want to go down below this one below the first one there will be one in there go down and just paste what we copied from the clipboard and once you're done, you just want to hit Control X, hit Y, save it, all right, and then go back to your console. Now that we're in the console, we need to set up our environment path. And we also want to set up our Node.js binary path. Okay, so to find out what your Node.js binary path is, type in which node, all right, and copy this. Copy it all the way up to the tilde over here. So copy this. So you're going to copy it. You have to use control C. Go over here to Node.js environment path. All right, control V, paste that in. For our environment path, we're going to use slash var slash www slash HTML. And this is going to take us into the HTML directory. Okay. Once you hit that, you're going to hit next. And then it's going, then you're going to hit create. And then once you create, it's going to check to make sure that it's connected, okay? So once it connects, it will ask if you want to install the Cloud9 IDE. Just go ahead, click install. It might take a couple minutes. Um, it could take, you know, five to 10 minutes and it'll install. If it does not install, then that's fine. You can actually do it from PowerShell. Okay, and so to do that, I'm going to, to do it from PowerShell. I will create, will copy the link into the description below of how to install it in PowerShell so that you don't have to go through the GUI installer that you get on Amazon or through Cloud9. And so once you've installed everything, it's going to open. And when you open the IDE, you'll get this screen. Then you're going to be and you're going to see this screen right here. Now, if you get to this screen and you see an error about permissions, you're going to want to change the permissions on your file system here, down here in the terminal. So if I go to add new and I go to new terminal right here, what we're going to do, and this is not great security by any means, but this is just to learn on. You're going to type sudo chmod space dash r capital r seven 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 and the and then the folder which is slash var slash www slash html and this is going to give it recursive rewrite permissions so that you can actually use the ide and save to it and create folders you can upload and everything like that okay we have 
installed it. We've set our permissions so that we can actually use it. And so now that we have gone that far, now we can actually start to code. So I'm gonna hit close here. And this is the index.html file that we created in the previous video. Now, whenever you're in here, this, like I said, this works like an IDE. So you can do lots of different things. So if I want to say, put in an H2, which stands as, which is a heading two, it'll auto complete for me. So if I start to type it, I type in H2 and then I hit, and then I close that tag, it'll actually put the closing tag for it on the other side as well. So we can say this is H2 heading, okay? We can actually go down here. You can even do PHP, you can do JavaScript. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can do CSS. So you can do like CSS links, you can do head, HTML, C, and this right here will give you, so like I can just boom, right there. I can put in a new div, and inside that div, you know, I can do um, a new paragraph, or I can do a form, whatever. So if I put a new paragraph, I put this is a new paragraph. Okay, and then if you hit Control S, it will save. Once it's saved, you can go to preview, and you can preview the file, and over on the right hand side, you're actually gonna see what it looks like. Now, this is HTML, so it doesn't have any structure to it, it's just a markup language, okay? So there's no style, it's not stylized. But we do know that this is working. You can also create other things. So if I wanted to go in here and create a new file, I can do PHP if I wanted to. You can do a PHP file. You can also save it. So if I go in here and save it, um, it'll ask me what I want to call it. And I'll say, we can call it index.php. Okay. You can start, you can see I'm still getting some markup language here. Um, so you can actually do PHP code in here. So you can type in like echo and it's going to give you all this stuff. So. There's lots of different things that you can do inside of this IDE. We can do Python, we can do Java, PHP, um, we'll do JavaScript, you can do Node. Uh, there's really all sorts of stuff that we can do. And so this has been the intro to Cloud9. So this is how you install Cloud9 and get it ready and use this browser-based IDE. In our next video, we're going to install MySQL and PHP. And then once we install MySQS, MySQL, get our database set up and we install PHP, then we're actually gonna start heading towards building a website. And so we're gonna start with HTML, we're gonna do some HTML lessons, and then we're gonna do CSS lessons, we're gonna do PHP lessons and JavaScript lessons. And so we're gonna start working towards being able to create our own website in EC2. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more lessons and tutorials coming up. We'll be doing a lot more other stuff in AWS. We're going to look at setting up an RDS or a relational database um, inside of e Amazon. And we're going to actually, we can connect it to EC2 so that the database isn't housed on the EC2 instance, but it will be housed in its own uh, database server. We'll look at setting security groups and VPCs. There's a lot of different things that we're going to look at in EC2 as well. We're doing videos on a Windows development machine. So um, there'll be a video coming up of building the development machine and then setting up our environment and actually developing in it and connecting to say GitHub um, so that we can create our own repository and work in it from there. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, leave a like and a comment if you want to. Leave a comment of if you're enjoying this, you know what you're looking forward to learning and if you're excited to learn a new skill. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.